Good day grade 11s, welcome to this next lesson in week 16. We are still working at ideal gases and their thermal properties and we are going to join the Mindset Learn team as they teach us about Boyle's Law. Hello grade 11s, welcome to this lesson on Boyle's Law concepts. Boyle's law is about the relationship between pressure and volume for a trapped gas at constant temperature and amount. In this lesson, we focus on the concepts involved in Boyle's law. In another lesson, we see how Boyle's law can be confirmed in the lab. Remember that pressure is force per area. And the pressure which a trapped gas exerts is related to the rate of collisions of the molecules with the walls of the container that the gas is trapped in. Here we have a simulation of trapped gas. We can decrease the volume of the gas if we push harder on the lid. Predict. As we decrease the gas's volume, will the molecules hit the sides more or less? Let's watch. We push the lid down. Notice how the gas molecules collide with the sides of the container more as they are squashed in a smaller space. What does that tell us about the relationship between volume and pressure? As volume is decreased, pressure increases. If we could make the container bigger, there would be more space for the molecules, so they would reach and collide with the sides less often. So, as volume is increased, pressure decreases. So, there is an inverse relationship between pressure and volume. Does this mean they are inversely proportional? Maybe, maybe not. An inverse relationship simply means that as one variable decreases, the other increases. Inverse proportion is more specific. It means that as one variable decreases, the other increases by the same factor. So, if pressure is inversely proportional to volume, if you halve a gas's volume, the pressure will double. Pressure can be measured in various units. However, for simplicity, we will not use any of these units to start with. To help us understand inverse proportion, Let's start with a simple unit for pressure so that our numbers let us see patterns easily. So we will simply use the unit units. We can use any unit of pressure as long as two units exert double as much pressure as one unit, three units triple as much as one unit, and so on. So let's say we start with a 5 liter container with a movable lid. A gas is trapped inside it. Throughout the investigation, we adjust the heating so that its temperature remains constant. We do not add or remove any gas particles so the mass of the trapped gas is constant. Also, the type of gas is constant. So in this investigation, we control these variables. Temperature, amount, and type of gas. We change volume so volume is our independent variable. And we see what effect this has on pressure, so pressure is our dependent variable. So what is the focus question for this investigation? How does the volume of the trapped gas affect the gas's pressure? Some variables have cause-effect relationships which only work one way. For example, cold weather can cause you to put on a jersey. But when you put on a jersey, it does not cause the weather to turn cold. But pressure and volume can both affect one another. So if you decrease the volume of this gas, its pressure will increase. Volume change causes pressure change. But if you decrease the volume, you push harder. You have to increase the pressure you exert on the gas. And so the pressure which the gas exerts back on you also increases. So we can say change in pressure causes change in volume. So we could take pressure as our independent variable and volume as our dependent variable. Then our focus question is, 
How does the pressure exerted on the trapped gas affect the gas's volume? Notice that the pressure exerted by the gas is the same as the pressure exerted on the gas when the container is still. So we could change this from to how does the pressure of a trapped gas affect the gas's volume. Any of these three questions is answered by Boyle's law. For this lesson, let's look at simplified data which answers these questions. Remember we said the volume of this container is 5 liters. That is the same as 5 decimeters cubed. At this volume, this gas exerts 1 unit of pressure. To compress the trapped gas, we push the lid down until the new volume is half what it was to start with. It is now 2,5 decimeters cubed. Our pressure gauge tells us that the gas now exerts 2 units of pressure. We compress the gas more and more, and each time we take the pressure measurement. This is the data we collect. The last volume measurement has been left out. Calculate what it must be from the patterns in the data. This data shows that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. There are a number of patterns in inverse proportion data. Notice that for each line of data, pressure multiplied by volume gives a constant value. We call this a proportionality constant, K. For this particular amount of temperature and gas, and for these units of pressure and volume, this constant is 5. 5 times 1 equals 5. 2,5 times 2 equals 5. 1,67 times 3 equals 5, and so on. If you don't get exactly 5 for any of the lines of data, this is because of rounding off error. Now let's use this pattern to solve for our unknown. Let's call the unknown value V. V times 6 must equal 5. So what is V? We divide both sides of the equation by 6 to make V the subject of the formula. And we find the same answer we got earlier, 0, 0,833. We know from the table that the unit is decimeters cubed. Let's write this pattern in equation form. Let's call line 1's volume V1 and its pressure P1. We've seen that V1 times P1 equals 5 for this situation. Let's call line 2's volume V2 and its pressure P2. We've seen that V2 times P2 also equals 5 for this situation. So that must mean that V1 times P1 equals V2 times P2. Or, put another way, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. This doesn't only apply to the data from lines 1 and 2, but for any two lines of pressure and volume data we can get from this situation. For example, P1, V1 equals P5, V5. 1 times 5 equals 5 times 1. P3, V3 equals P4, V4. 3 times 1,67 equals 4 times 1,25 because both equal 5. There are some things you must be careful about when you use this equation. The equation only applies for a constant amount of trapped gas at a constant temperature. This equation compares one gas with itself under two different conditions of pressure and volume. So only use this equation if you are given P and V data for a gas and then asked either P or V for that same gas at the same temperature. Let's try an example of a question where we can use this equation. 10 decimeters cubed of a fixed mass of hydrogen gas at 273 Kelvin and at a pressure of 100 kilopascals is subjected to a pressure of 200 kilopascals at the same temperature. What is the new volume of the gas in decimeters cubed? We see the mass of gas is fixed, in other words, constant. 
and the temperature is also kept constant. To start with the gas's volume was 10 decimeters cubed and its pressure 100 kilopascals. So we have P1 and V1. Then the gas's pressure was doubled from 100 to 200 kilopascals. We must calculate what this gas's volume is now. So we also have P2 and we need to solve for V2. We don't really need the equation. The pressure has been doubled, so the volume must have halved from 10 to 5 decimeters cubed. But let's use the equation anyway. This does give us 5. We know the unit is decimeters cubed because that was V1's unit. With this equation, V1 and V2 always have the same units as one another, and P1 and P2 have the same units as one another. We have seen that pressure is inversely proportional to volume, or because they each affect the other, we could also say volume is inversely proportional to pressure. We show this mathematically like this. Let's focus on the top form of the equation now. We can multiply both sides of this equation by V. This simplifies like this. PV is directly proportional to 1. This does not mean that any P times its associated V equals 1. We've already seen that for this particular situation, PV equals 5, not 1. What it does mean is that for a particular amount of gas at a constant temperature, the gas's pressure multiplied by its associated volume will always equal the same constant which we can call K. This relationship doesn't tell us what that constant's value is or how to calculate it. For the situation we used in this lesson, the constant was 5. For another situation, it will probably be a different number. As we learn more about gases, we will learn how to calculate what this constant is for a particular mass and temperature of gas. Before we end this lesson, there is one more pattern to look at, the shape of the graph we get from inverse proportion data. If we plot pressure and volume against one another, we get a curved line, a hyperbola. This is a characteristic of inverse proportion. When pressure is low, volume is high. When pressure is high, volume is low. And that's all for this lesson. Right, grade 11s, I hope you found it very useful and that you now understand Boyle's Law, which is basically that for a constant amount or amount of gas, number of moles of gas, and at a specific, te specific temperature, the pressure times the volume is always a constant. And I hope that you from this video now know how to use Boyle's Law. We will be looking a little bit later on, at further examples on how to use Boyle's Law to solve different problems. Have a great day.